Hey everyone, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria. For those of you who don't know me, I have a Master's of Science degree in Human Nutrition and I specialize in helping you to build a high functioning metabolism so that you can experience the ultimate level of food and body freedom where you can eat as much as you want, fulfill that sweet tooth craving and get the body of your dreams most importantly, you'd be able to sustain it because you're healthy as well, okay? So we're not sacrificing our health for a weight loss goal, okay? The weight loss comes as a side effect of supporting your metabolic health. So welcome to today's video. I'm going to be answering a question that I got on my uh, most recent YouTube video. Do you need to be raw vegan for best results? Um, where I featured raw food romance there. But I hope you guys like today's format. It's been a while since I've filmed with my phone. I had to clear out a lot of storage. Um, <coughs> so I hope you enjoy the higher quality. Um, okay, so today's question. Would love your thoughts about Durian Riders saying to add lots of sugar with lots of fruit. Do you think it helps thyroid function? And needed, mm, would love to hear your experience with this. Thanks so much. Okay, so I think a little bit was left out there. But in general, I got, would love to hear your thoughts about during rider saying to add lots of sugar with lots of fruit. Do you think it helps thyroid function? Okay, so I'll show you guys what I'm having for lunch. I've been working on this watermelon. It is the dead of winter. <laughs> Where I live right now, I think the high today is like 10 degrees. It was 7 out this morning. And when I went to the grocery store yesterday, this watermelon was sitting by itself. And my middle child loves watermelon. I have a hard time getting her to eat um, fruit this time of year because it's not very sweet. So uh, she doesn't like tart fruit and... Uh, so whenever I can score her a watermelon, she's always down to gobble it up, even if it's not the best watermelon, but this one is pretty good. So yeah, it's kind of decent amount missing, but honestly, to me, this watermelon isn't very sweet. So I add, this is just white table sugar in here. This is an old coconut sugar container. So I generally buy sugar in a big old bag got some chapstick on because my lips are quite chapped right now. I'm probably going to actually take it off because I don't like to eat my chapstick. <laughs> okay, that's better. All right, so I'm going to take the sugar and the watermelon. And this is what I did earlier. Mmm, there's still some sugar left over in there. So if your fruit isn't very tasty, just add some sugar. Okay, I usually add like a sprinkle, you know, and then taste it, and if it needs more, I, need, I put more. So, you know, I sprinkle the surface and uh, increase the bricks value of the fruit artificially. <laughs> so, it's better to get the fruit in than not to. Because what, then what else are you going to eat, right? So you want to be getting in a decent amount of fruit every day to meet carbohydrate and nutrient requirements. A lot of people find, myself included, that if you eat starch, a starch-based diet, you still crave sweet. And that's because our body requires and a certain quota for fruit every day, okay? There's so many nutrients that come in fruit that our body needs. So it craves sweet in order to make you eat the fruit. But um, a lot of fruit isn't grown properly, so it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> when it's picked too ripe or <laughs> picked too early and it doesn't ripen properly, um, then it won't be as sweet. So I go over something in my coaching program called Bricks Value, and the higher bricks value fruit, more nutrient con nutrients it contains. 
and uh, bricks value is sensed. So if you have a high bricks value, high nutrient dense fruit, it's high in sugar content. This also helps to prevent spoilage. As I've talked about in previous videos, sugar acts as an anti-fermentation agent. So it will make your fruit last longer when it has a naturally high Brix value. But a lot of canned fruit used to be canned with sugar for that same purpose. So Harley recommends fruit and sugar and starch so that you can meet your quota for carbohydrate because according to the dietetic factors for are influencing glucose tolerance by H.P. Hemsworth uh, when your diet contains an excess of carbohydrate and is low in fat you will be more insulin sensitive insulin sensitivity translates to low uh, circulating insulin levels so basically you're just using insulin when you need to and then you're done with it. Insulin's function is to take glucose out of the blood and put it into the cells for energy generation. So we don't want high blood glucose levels, um, which is what happens when you have impaired sugar tolerance. And that comes from uh, eating a diet that's high in fat and insufficient in carbohydrates. So excess carbs, <laughs> low fat so what foods are naturally going to be the ones that you need to eat in order to uh, eat in the way that makes you insulin sensitive and naturally slim and lean and healthy is going to be fruits sweet fruits sugar and low fat starches like rice potatoes wheat corn yams, millet, whatever you like. I like rice. The Walter Kempner rice diet used fruit, sugar, and rice, <laughs> and it helped people lose weight and reverse uh, many chronic diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, kidney problems, and um, other issues associated with insulin resistance. So that is why Durian Rider recommends fruit and sugar and I recommend putting sugar on your fruit to make it tastier clearly it's not making me fat <laughs> so I've actually noticed that since I've upped my sugar intake I've had more energy and I've been and I've lost a little bit of weight because it's making me more insulin sensitive and when you put more in, more fuel in, you can do more as well, which translates to taking in more oxygen, higher metabolic rate, increased oxygen uptake equals a higher VO2 max. More oxygen you can take in, the more fat you can burn. Fat being turned into energy requires oxygen. Oxygen drives the aerobic respiration cycle and oxidative phosphorylation because we've got aerobic respiration. Aerobic means with oxygen. Oxidative phosphorylation using oxygen, okay? Fatty acid oxidation. So we're using oxidation, oxygen to break apart these molecules and turn them into fuel. And in our TCA cycle, uh, which is a part of aerobic respiration cycle for generating energy, we need glucose to drive the cycle along with oxygen. And this um, is the ignition for uh, burning fat efficiently as well. So you maintain a dietary fat deficit, then you're able to tap into body fat stores for this process. People think that we just burn carbohydrates for fuel. We are always burning carbs and fat together. 
uh, just at different ratios depending on what you're doing, okay? So, when you don't eat enough carbs, you slow down your ability to generate energy, which just makes sense, you know? And then you can turn on gluconeogenesis when you bonk and you've run out of carbs, so now you need to start turning protein into carbs, um, which is gonna create muscle wastage and lower the metabolism. I'm finding it easier right now to talk and drink than talk and chew. But gluconeogenesis, because of the lack of glucose available, you're not able to make as much oxaloacetate. So the drop in oxaloacetate slows down your metabolism. So there's like actually a biochemical reason why your metabolism slows down when glucose isn't available. And this slows down uh, fatty acid oxidation as well. And then you get a buildup of acetyl-CoA kind of like backlogged from fatty acid oxidation. And so if there is gluconeogenesis on for long enough, then you're going to start um, converting some of that acetyl-CoA buildup into ketones <clears throat> and running ketosis. So really you want to just <laughs> eat the carbs and um, provide the energy that your body needs um, or provide the fuel that your body needs to create energy. So Let's talk about the thyroid real quick. I actually have a section on thyroid health in my coaching program and everything that I'm talking about right now is in my coaching program too. The link for that is in the description of this video. Um, so thyroid stimulating hormone or your TSH is what makes your thyroid hormones, okay? So you need your TSH to be within normal range. You don't want it to be too high, which would be hypothyroidism. You don't want it to be too low, which would be hyperthyroidism. So you got hypo and hyper. Hypo means that you don't have enough material basically to generate thyroid hormones. This is the more common condition um, compared to hyperthyroidism. Um, so we're gonna focus mainly on that because hypothyroidism is generally caused by eating insufficient calories from carbohydrates because in order to generate thyroid hormones you need carbohydrates okay there's a really intricate process that occurs that enables your thyroid to um, utilize the sugars that are um, in your diet to convert them into thyroid hormones, okay? And this process to having a healthy thyroid is really beneficial for your metabolic health. The thyroid, which is a butterfly gland that's right in here, um, is, directs your metabolism. So you need these thyroid hormones to be produced in order to keep everything running smoothly. So there's several things that can, that if they're not uh, available, like sufficient carbohydrates, enough B12, enough vitamin D, these are all gonna impact your metabolism negatively and basically slow things down, impair its functioning and promote insulin resistance. So anytime you have um, you know, an issue with, um, nutrient deficiency, which is mostly for most people, it's carbohydrate deficiency that initiates this entire process. Um, you're going to get the metabolic slowdown due to, you know, the fact that you're, um, hindering your body's ability to, uh, generate energy. So I'm just pulling up my coaching program right now and I'm going to go down to the thyroid section. The other thing that's really interesting and I start my coaching program out this way is that photosynthesis generate the product the byproducts of photosynthesis are oxygen and glucose which drive our energy generation cycle. So we really live in a 
in a symbiotic relationship with our planet and the plants that grow here because we uh, release carbon dioxide um, which plants turn into oxygen so the whole process of photosynthesis okay which is uh, the main like chemical process that you know makes our living on this planet unique is that um, cellular respiration cycle which is you know photosynthesis um, takes carbon dioxide and water with UV light um, in a plant cell and turns it into oxygen and glucose and then within our cell mitochondria it, within our cells we take oxygen and glucose and turn it into ATP okay so um, and then we give off you know the carbon dioxide and I guess water in the form of you know if we were peeing on the planet <laughs> giving those plants back uh, some of that water right okay so for more information you know click the link in the down bar and get a copy of my coaching program you won't regret it okay and it's like the cheapest course on nutrition that you'll ever pay for i i paid 30 grand for my education in nutrition and I sell my coaching program for 200 bucks right now and I do put it on sale on occasion as well. So, um, following carbohydrate ingestion, insulin is released to take sugar out of our blood and put it into our cells. This reaction triggers the production of T3, which is a thyroid hormone, and norepinephrine, which increase the metabolic rate for effective fat burning. T3 is responsible for growth and development, metabolism, body temperature, and heart rate. Our metabolic rate is dependent on adequate production of T3. So we want our TSH, our thyroid stimulating hormone, to be able to generate T3 from, you know, the sugars that we're taking in. So all goes hand in hand, put the carbs in, and you don't even have to think about it. I mean, it's really important, I think, to know this information if you are on the fence with like other diet paradigms, other nutrition theories, other, you know, dogmatic uh, food principles, okay? So then you can kind of get rid of all that stuff learn the basics, learn the science, and then um, apply it by, you know, just knowing what to eat, which I go over in my coaching program. We go over the science, then we go over the application process, okay? Um, anyways, <laughs> I'm going to get going here soon. Anyways, all you have to know is what to eat, and then eat enough of it, which is fruit, sugar, starches, vegetables, legumes if you desire them you know keep the diet overt fat free if weight loss is the goal if you wait if you're in a weight maintenance or weight gain stage then you can add the fats back in um but you want to maintain insulin sensitivity so you always want those carbs to be high so your insulin can work properly getting that glucose out of your blood and into your cells okay thank you so much for the question and uh, thank you for tuning in for today's video. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave any more comments and questions down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.